Hey guys, this is Brian. I'm the reptile keeper at Niagara Zoo. And today we are gonna read the book Verdi. Um, so here we go and get started. All right, on a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle and a mother python was sending her hatchlings out to the forest. Forest, all the, way the, all the way that mother pythons do. Grow up and be green and green as leaves are. She called her little yellow babies as they rapidly scattered amongst the trees. But Verdi dwelled, he was proudly eyeing his bright yellow skin. He especially liked his bold stripes and zigzag down his back. Why the, why the hurry to grow up so big and green, he wondered. Maybe some older snakes in the jungle would tell him the Verdi ventured into the treetops to look for them. Umble's Aggie Ribbon were lazily were lazy on some branches nearby. Verdi peered at the droopy green bodies. It's polite not to stare, asked Aggie. Umble's burped and groaned, and it's taken nearly four weeks for me to, to digest that lizard. I surely do like lizards, but lizards don't like me. Why don't lizards like you, asked Verdi. Don't interrupt, Umble's grumbled. <laughs> Dear me, whined Aggie, if I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verdi trapped a tune on his tail and waited to speak. Stop that, Verdi. It makes me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be a proper green anyways, interrupting and constantly fidgeting. Verdi couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like that, and he really wanted to keep his spotty stripes. Uh, hoping to find his snakes weren't so boring, Verdi slipped away. Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb trees with me? I'm tired, Dozer growled. Go do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Verdi's heart sank. Greens were not lazy and boring. They were rude. At the top of a very tall tree, Verdi gripped one branch with his tail and another with his little snake jaws. I will never be lazy, boring, or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Verdi let go. And he flew. <laughs> From a distance, the green watched, oh my, in a chorus, Ribbons shook his head. At this rate, he'll be lucky to make his first mole. Aggie nodded. He's likely to put an eye out on a branch. Umbles moaned, he will not live to turn green. But one day, Verdi's skin began to peel, revealing his pale green stripes stretched along his whole body. Ack, he grasped, how can this be? I'm, spe I'm the speediest snake in the jungle, and I'm still turning green. He raced down to the river, grabbing a mouthful of rough leaves. Verdi flung himself into the water. If I can't run off the green, I'll scrub it off, he thought. He frantically splashed and caught the eye of a large bottom feeder, cruising in the murky depths. Yum, er, mm, said the old fish. Lunch. Before the fish could haul Verdi under, the frightened snake bit him on the nose. Apu, said the blast of his rubbery lips, and the fish sneezed, sending Verdi into the air. Slapping on the soggy shore, Verdi skidded out of reach. Ooh, that was a close one, he sputtered. Every inch of my body was covered with wet, gloppy mud. Hmm, kind of lumpy, kind of brown. It sure beats being green. He left the mud on. But the soft brown muck dried in a hard gray shell and Verdi could barely move. If he even budged, the stuff cracked off in jagged chunks. As peace fell away, Verdi could see that his body was even greener than before. This is terrible, cried Verdi. He, pic he pictured himself hanging around in droopy loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like the old greens. He looked up in the sky where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just the color he used to be. Then he pulled a vine at the top of a tree. Launching himself into the treetop, Verdi startled a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with delight, sure the bright sun and his lofty speed would turn him golden again. In his joy, Verdi forgot he would fall back to earth. Whippity wappity flip flop wham, plumbing through the trees, Verdi landed on his crooked sprawl across a log and forest floor. He couldn't move, help he croaked. 
As usual, the Greens had been watching Verdi's antics and moved quickly to where he lay. Didn't we say it would come to this, Umbles sh said, shaking his head. Aggie sighed, Luckily, thing, lucky thing he's got two good eyes. They gently lifted Verdi up to a safe place where they could watch over him and while he healed. Neatly splittered on a branch, Verdi had no choice but to listen to the Greens as they cracked cattle. Remember how I used to streak across the forest floor, Ribbon asked, quick as lightning, asked Aggie. And I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller than you know. The things I dared to run down and swallow, Uncle's bragged. Wild boar were no match for me. Verdi was astonished. You used to run and climb and hunt giant pigs? What happened? Ribbon crashed, just like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put out my eye. Then umble, an old Umbles here nearly choked to death. Now we prefer the quiet life, a warm perch, a little sunshine, and an occasional good meal. The Greens rambled on for their days of glory, and Verdi settled on his branch. Finally, one afternoon, Umbles said, looks like you're ready to go again. He carefully untied Verdi on the branch. You're welcome to come with us, said Aggie. Ribbon agreed. The three Greens slipped quietly back into the forest. Verdi wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go. He just stretched and stayed put until the warm sun went down and listened to the forest come alive. Time passed, the sun moon tur turns to the sky. Bertie marveled at the full moon grew thinner every day at night. Then he watched patiently as it slowly grew around. He wondered why he hadn't noticed it before. Bertie became so green that he blended perfectly with the leaves. He was so still that other creatures right, walked right without seeing him. One fine morning, as Verdi basked in the sunshine, two small yellow snakes approached. They tapped the frigid as they started. Get a load of this old green guy, one of them whispered. Do you even think he moves? The other snake snickered. I seriously doubt it. They were just like I used to be, thought Verdi, and now I'm what I was afraid to be. He looked, as, looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How would you like to climb trees with me, he asked. With you, the yellow snake's astonished. It, I'll even show you my fancy figure eight, Bertie replied, although he was a little worried about putting his eye out. With practice, the three snakes performed the perfect triple figure eight. Leaping and looping, this little striped friends, Bertie and I, may I be, may I be, be big and green, but I'm still me. And that's it of our little book, Verdi, for our wonderful green tree python here at Niobe Zoo. Um, these guys come from Australia and inhibit all the tropical rainforests that, that arise in the continent. Um, we feed this little guy little rodents maybe once or twice a week. And we keep his enclosure really warm and humid for him because they love it. And he's doing a great job at just hanging out. And he might even be asleep. All right, well, we'll see you next time. I'm Brian. Bye, everyone.